kids. <laughs> it feels like it's been like an hour. It's only been like five minutes. Only been like five minutes. So, still got coffee. And it's still warm, so I'm going to be drinking it. Mm. Very easy question right here. Very easy question. Name the positive acute angle, and then you got scared because these two have negative. You're like, oh, no, it can't be that. Did you actually type the thing into your calculator? Let's do that. Sine of 230. Sine 230. Boom. Now, 230 is not an acute angle. Notice my answer turned out to be negative. So what I want to do is I want to pick the one that gives me the same thing, and that would be negative sine 250. If I had to put in negative sine, excuse me, 50, not 250. Boom, look at that. Oh, look, they match. Done. Problem's over with. Wow, is that easy, Mr. Krause? I can't believe it, Mr. Krause. That was easy. You're the boss. Okay, if you remember correctly, in a circle, the center goes in, but goes in with opposite signs. So instead of two, it has to be negative two. So these two don't make any sense. Now, if you remember correctly, over here goes R squared. Not R, but R squared. Now, if you look at these two, if you square this, don't you get this? Yeah, that makes three the answer. If you don't like it, you could have drawn it all out and created a triangle, plotted those points, created a triangle, and found out that the it was the square root of 41, or 41 was, oh, let me do it for you. Oh, my gosh. Stop asking. Must be those girls from Spencerport. Always asking. Mr. Kraus, this. Mr. Kraus. I'm just kidding. They were great. I had great kids this summer. If you were in my summer school class, thank you. You guys were awesome. Fun, fun class. Four hours of listening to me talk. Who the heck would ever want to do that? That sounds like torture. Two, three, four, five, six, one, two. So all I do is plot these two points. I might use my graph paper. And then I want to find out, remember, it's like a circle goes like this, right? So I want to find out what this distance is. So I use my Pythagorean theorem. Let's see, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so a squared, 16 plus b squared, 25, is 41. So, well, this is really r. So r squared is equal to 4 squared plus 5 squared, which is just 41. So r squared is 41. There it is. There's the answer. All right, I'm not going to draw this one out. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you drew this, well, let's just graph it. What the heck? You're like, Mr. Krauss, I graphed it on my calculator. Why do you have to be so lazy and not graph it on your calculator? Leave me alone, punk. I forgot what it was already. 3 to the x. So 3 raised to the x. So I had this kid in class this year. He goes to Spenceport. If you see him next year, call him Pongo. We had all kinds of fun names. Oh, yeah, I still got to create my Tinky Winky. If I have time, I'll do the Tinky Winky. Look at this. Domain. Does it go forever and ever to the left? Yes. Does it go wee, forever and ever and ever and ever to the right? Yes, the domain. The domain is all real numbers. Why is that up? Oh my goodness, the domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes like this. It just keeps going and just keeps going. This one, quite frankly, I would just type in my calculator and these people made it this as the answer. That was not nice. They clearly did not want you to do this the normal way. They wanted you to do it the weird way. So this was the right answer. I'm not necessarily going to go through this. I would just type this in your calculator, get a decimal, type this in your calculator, get a decimal. You'll see that they match. Done. Problem's over with. Now, this is another one. Okay, so the state decided, let's see if we can trick the kids. Let's see if we can get the kids guessing on whether or not they actually know what they're talking about. And then you did this problem. You're like, what? And you're like, huh? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, mm -hmm. Luke, feel the force. I had a kid in summer school. His name was Luke. Luke, you're a nice guy. If I don't call your name out from summer school, it's probably because you're either quiet or maybe didn't come to class once in a while there or had to leave early. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about, leaving early. I have to go to work now. Yeah, right. Anyway, a sub 1 is 1 half. a sub n, or in this case, a sub 2, which is n plus 1, is equal to 1 minus whatever a sub 1 is. Well, a sub 1 is just a half. So 1 minus a half is a half. So then a sub 3 
is really 1 minus a sub 2, but a sub 2 was a half, so that's 1 minus a half, so that's a half. And the next one's going to be a half. The most, well, dumb question. I didn't say it. I really didn't. Ever. Now, next question. Woo, man, not a, man, not a nice question here either, I don't think. I don't think it's that bad. It, you know, they could have made it a little nicer for you, a little more fun for you, but they didn't. They don't like you. I like you, at least if you were in my summer school class. By the way, for those of you that were down the hall from my summer school class and I was screaming my head off at kids, I was just joking. It was just a joke. My God, cut me some slack. All right, 82. 82. Ding, 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 ding. We're going to add 3.6. I'm going to try to do this in my head. It's going to get ugly. Oh, how about 85.6? And then we're going to add another 3.6. Let's go. That's 88, 89.2, 89.2. And then we're going to add another 3.6. So that's 92.8, 92.8. I feel like that's my temperature of my body, but I think it's 98.6, 92.8. And then you're going to find out, wait, 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 wait. We want to stop at 91, Grouse. Well, 91, let's say 3.6 divided by 2. Let's see what a half a standard deviation is. Oh, that's 1.8. So if I take 1.8 and I add it to this, I get 91. Okay, so the thing is, up one standard deviation, up two standard deviation, up two and a half standard deviations. Now, I don't have the formula sheet right with me, but if you remember correctly on the formula sheet, and let me try to draw a little quick sketch of it over here on the formula sheet. Uh, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and then three standard deviations. This would be 0.1, and this would be 0.5. So that's like... 0.6 out of, so it's 0.6. So you beat like 99%. That means you kick some serious butt. The answer is above the 95th percentile. So awesome if you did it. Not awesome if you didn't. Um, again, I don't have the formula sheet on, on this one particular one. I don't know where it is. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you remember correctly, double angle formula, you got to go to the formula sheet. You want to use the one with cosine in it. So the cosine formula is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, or 2. We know what cosine theta is. It's 3 fourths squared minus 1. And the answer is 1 eighth. If you type this in your calculator, you get 1 eighth. I'm not going to do it. You just do. All right. So in order for it to be a function, you cannot have any repeating x values. So if I look at the x values, nothing repeats. So all the x values are different. So m is a function. So now it's got to be one of these. Now I just want to check for one to one. Well, if it's going to be one to one or its inverse is going to be a function, I can't have any repeating y values. Notice these two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are the same. Therefore, its inverse is not a function. The answer is choice two. Moving on. Yay. Oh, my. This is the second one of these questions on here. I don't know why we needed to. You had to simplify the negative radical 180. So... This is, to, this is a square root, so every two of these, I take out 1x. So x, the square root of x to the 8th, uh, excuse me, x to the 16th is really x to the 8th. So I need the answers with x to the 8th in it. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And then you should know, without doing any work, that if you take the square root of a negative number, you're going to have an i in it. And so this is the right answer. And really the reason it is is because the square root of negative 180 scares square weird. Square root of negative 180 is the negative radical 36 times radical 5. And then this is just 6i. Okay. Uh, this question was nasty. State. There's no reason for this problem to be on a test. Absolute ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I get it. The formula's on there. Formula sheet's on there. Blah, 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 blah. But, so, uh, the way I've taught it, always taught it, is 15C0, 15C1, 15C2, got to go to 9, 15C3, 15C4, 15C5, 15C6, 15C7, 15C8. Now, this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight. Here's the ninth term. So it's 15 C8. So these aren't right. But I'll bet one, I'll bet you all picked one of those because it was the ninth term. And you wanted the one with a nine in it. And then on the parentheses here, you know, of course, we'd put a 3x here and I'd put a 2y here. This one starts at 15, then 14, then 13, then 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And then this one would have an 8 on it. And the answer is choice 3. Not a very particular easy question. Kind of a nasty question. There was no reason for it. <sighs> the next question, really... This is an SAT question. At least the top part is. The answers are kind of dumb. If you have six people at a party and they all have to shake hands with people, how many handshakes are going to take place? Well, that that's if, if that, that's all, folks. Anyway, there's going to be two people at a time shaking hands, correct? So I'll shake hands with Bonafidi. Got your name in there, bro. Uh, and then I'll shake hands with uh, Pongo. Huh, no. Maybe maybe Ashley, but not Pongo. Um, so anyway, I go around, I shake people's hands, right? Well, if I shake Pongo's hand, Pongo shook my hand. So that, that counts once, but that counts for once for him. But it's only one handshake. It's not one for him, one for me. So really, if it doesn't matter who's shaking whose hand, it's combinations. And it's six people, and we want to choose two of them. How many different ways are there to choose two people if there's six people how many different ways are there to choose two people and there's 15 different ways so that's the first thing you had to figure out and then for some strange reason they decided to have these answers now there might be a reason for this to be the answer i don't know what it is i think maybe you're just trying but that thing turns out to be 15. i don't know why it's 15 but it is and finally so these last three questions terrible terrible this question right here come on I was asking, I was, I was explaining this question to somebody. I think there were a math teacher. I'm pretty sure because I don't know who they are exactly. And she said, oh, oh yeah, that's what I did first. Uh, oops. This is completing the square. If you remember correctly for completing the square, because completing the square creates this thing, which nobody really calls it that way, at least in summer school. We don't have time. It's called the perfect square trinomial. Uh, you would put a minus, and you have to take half of this. Well, if you're a high school student and you're taking a half of a fourth, so you just cut a fourth in half, clearly you get a half. <laughs> Wait a second. Let's try this again. If I have a fourth of a pizza, well, let's try it this way. What am I doing? If I have a fourth of a pizza and I want to cut that in half, I'm taking this. Is that a half a pizza or like a lot? It's a fourth. So the first thing you had to do is figure out how to take half of this. Well, half of one-fourth is one-eighth. So the one-eighth goes here. So that means k would have to be this squared, which is one-sixty-fourth. Not a nice question. Not fair. Okay, if you like what you saw, I'm not talking about this mug. Nobody likes this mug. Nobody. Nobody. However, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. Underneath the subscribe button over there somewhere could possibly be a donate button. My computer's dying on me, kids. Next, I don't even know if I'm going to survive next year. I'm just kidding, man. But anyway, hope you guys did all right. Hope you had a good time. Hope, hopefully you kick butt. Part twos, threes, fours, and fives are coming. Yeah, part five. We had a part five on our test. It was really hard. Just kidding. Bye. Okay.